Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. Uh, very special guest. We've had him on the show before. You might know him as Snork y 2 k We also know him as Mitchell Helt, uh, who is supporting the show on the Patreon level. As If you go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood for 25 bucks a month, you can do interviews like this where we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, Mitchell, how you doing today? Hi. I <laughs> uh, wanted to talk today about uh, single-payer health care. Okay. There's a lot of a lot of myths and and accusations being thrown around, but I'd like to look at it from the economic point of somebody that runs a business, and somebody runs a business if they have to pay uh, for health insurance, usually they're paying a portion of it, and you're paying a portion of it. The number of people that they even have to have on their own staff to to uh, to handle the uh, health care insurance. Uh, and then there's a lot of people involved at the insurance company, at the billing companies for the for the doctors, and each time a piece of paper in a business tends to change hands between one business to the next, it's usually thirty to eighty dollars of cost is added. Wow! So, uh, if yeah, pieces of paperwork are expensive to move around because uh, usually it in, involves uh, a, a a signature, time, people mm -hmm. talking. Or even if it's just a shuffling, it, it's it's involving labor. But when you go across companies, there's always a charge as right. you got to handle charging. So that that charging. So when you get into uh, the finance operations of an insurance company, they might have to contract the operation to a uh, uh, an underwriter, a, a second insurance company that they have in case they have to pay more cases than they expect. Mm -hmm. And we don't really even talk about underwriting of other stages of insurance. And that would be interesting if somebody else knows more about it. But but from the, the side of an employer, I'm paying a lot of money for all of these transactions. But what are, what are we really getting? So uh, I'm going to share the screen. And hopefully this will show up a little bit. Um, uh, let's see here. Well, while you're figuring that out, I mean, it's, it's such a good point that you're bringing up because they always say, oh, you know, Medicare for all, or it's going to be so expensive, you know, your taxes are going to go up. And they never explain how much we're already spending in healthcare. And we will actually bring the cost of healthcare down. And not only bring the cost down, but uh, hopefully the, the employers will be, will voluntarily, maybe forcibly, share the savings with the employee when they no longer have the cost of the healthcare, mm -hmm. which is going to be between 30 to 50% of the current cost of the, the employee. When we think of employee, uh, the uh, industrial engineer has to figure out how much the comp company operation is, has got to apply a multiplier of 1.3 to 1.5 to two <laughs> onto the cost per hour that you're paid as to what the, the cost them to make the product. Is it, you got to pay for the building and that load. You've got to pay for right. all your benefits, whatever. So that adds up real quick. And so the insurance costs that get passed on to the employer are very expensive. So if suddenly your employer has to pay 30% less, what's the reason why the employees can't say, we'd like to get at least 20% more? Right. And they both get a savings. Uh, employers are a lot, or employees get a lot happier with the 20% raise. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, that takes us from 15 all the way, all the way up past 17, right? Well, it's crazy because right now what you're talking about is if we did Medicare for all or some, you know, a single payer, some version of universal health care, it would cost less for the, for the employers, the, uh, they would be spending less money. So they would be bringing in more profits. They could even then give some of that, uh, extra money to their employees. So employees would be making more money and they would have health care, which would probably also be easier to use <laughs> because yeah. Medicare is, uh, you can go anywhere and the government negotiates with the health care provider on the cost of it. So I prepared a little video okay. to help, help people. Now this is a rather facetious and poorly done video. <laughs> Because I am, I am not a video major. Uh, you know, I, I did not study this in college, so I must, uh, uh, you know, apologize for the quality. Also, it's a very low draft quality. It's not a, what they call a final render. And uh, I've represented uh, two employees identically dressed, walking between a green table representing their need for healthcare 
and a yellow table um, representing their health care, what they have to go through to get it. And uh, so first we do uh, share screen. Um, and so what this design, what, what this is doing is just going to show real simple. Okay, I'll step back here. Okay, are you seeing a, a basically a white thing with uh, a, a two guys standing by green tables? Yes. Okay, so I've got them. Uh, the tables are uh, placed about the same distance apart. And uh, so I've created different paths that they have to walk. Uh, the chair is representing the different uh, passes that it has to go through for the employee that has insurance instead of okay, uh, so this Medicare employee parole. Up here, this is all of the places they have to go to get their health insurance. And this employee and this person down here just has like med Medicare for all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so what happens is all these people suddenly step in and each of them are going to need to be paid. Uh, another person has popped in there in the gray. Uh, and uh, so the, uh, the person that needs the, the health insurance is having to call around to get everything okayed <laughs> through the different levels. Money's passing around between different companies every time he has to make a step back. In the meantime, somebody else has just walked away with his health care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, he's not going to get it. He's going to be denied. So um, at that time, the person that had the Medicare for all is already is done. Uh, somebody else has made off with all the money. And the person who needs the health care is just wandering around aimlessly because you never know who is going to get your health care, even some kind of alien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's an alien right there. No, but I mean, this, 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 this just shows in very simple terms because it's like, if I need to go to a specialist, first I have to go to my regular doctor. Then they have to give, they have to approve me, you know. Then the health to 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 go see the specialist. Then the healthcare company has to approve. You know, it's 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 really, it's it's insane how how they do it, and you know, it, I I really like it, that is such a sim simple way to show all of the people you have to go. I know, I I've heard the story of somebody was in you know, Europe and they, they, I don't know, I think they like fell off their bicycle or something like that and needed to go to a hospital. And they're like, well, do I need to get a referral? And they're like, and the people in Europe were like, what's that? You just go like, if I need an eye doctor or a specialist or an orthopedic surgeon or a heart, I just go to that. I don't have to go to a regular doctor. It is so complicated to just get any specialist to look at you for something. And the doctor doesn't have to be asking you, okay, are you legitimately able to have this insurance? Right. It's just you walk in, they know you're insured. They're not caring about your insurance. They're immediately, every employer you're talking to is only thinking about you and your health. Yeah. Uh, so the outcome, they know they're going to get paid. So the variable that they're more worried about is how good is your care? And uh, that, that's, that's what we want from their health insurance. Now, the fact that we haven't got all of this stuff going around, there does mean that people will lose jobs in the insurance company. Mm -hmm. But remember all the help they gave us when our NAFTA jobs were taken away? They offered us COBRA insurance at five times what we were paying. <laughs> so I think we should give them unemployment insurance at one fifth of what uh, normally uh, normally someone would be offered. <laughs> well. <laughs> I mean, it's such, it's that, that argument of they're going to lose jobs. I always bring up the like, you know, when we came up with the car, we didn't, you know, complain, uh, oh, what a black, where a blacksmith's going to work. You know, when we came up with the computer, it's like, where are all these typewriter repair people and salespeople going to, where are they going to work? It's like you find new jobs, you find, you, you find other places to work and new industries pop up and, and all of that stuff, just keeping all of these people employed. And the other thing that's just offensive is, you know, 30,000 people a year die because they don't have health insurance. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, if you watch that documentary on Netflix, Knock Down the House, one of the candidates, Amy Valela, who um, I met last year and interviewed for this show, you know, she has this very heartbreaking story of one of her children dying because they didn't have the right health care. And that's why she was so passionate about running for office. That shouldn't happen in the richest country in the history of the world. Well, your, your, your simple diagram showed us why. There's six and seven people just for one person and that's somebody with health insurance still has to jump through all these. I remember 
you know, I had like chronic back pain and I, they, they couldn't figure out what it was. They thought, was it a hernia? Was it a slip disc? They were, you know, they didn't know what it was. And I would go, you know, I had to get an MRI and I had insurance and I still had to pay thousands of dollars for it. I mean, it was like, you pay for insurance three times. You pay your monthly premium, you pay your copay, and then you pay for all the stuff that isn't covered. And it's just like preposterous. And, and people from other countries are like, what are we, what, what's the purpose of healthcare? Why, why do you even have health, health insurance? You should just go, if you're sick, go out of pocket. I mean, it's, it's insane. Another thing about the jobs, we do have work for people. We have a lot of work that doesn't get done because all of our money is being wasted on health insurance. Uh, you know, these people, uh, a lot of them work hard. You know, the, the, the people that are answering the phones, pushing the paper, they're, they're making money. There's a lot of people who sell a few insurance policies a month and then go fly to Hawaii or whatever. So there's both ends of the scale. I feel bad for the people that actually work hard to get stuff done. But the there are jobs that need to be done, like cleaning the beaches, uh, uh, just tons of work that's not just just physical work. And there's the people that support those people. Because if, if people are out building new roads, uh, just the replacement of a, a, of a road to prevent a traffic jam in California can save as much gas as a state that this, uh, the size of Iowa uses in a week. Just in a day, you can lose it in a traffic jam. <laughs> right. You know, so there's all this, all these things that have to be thought about. Well, let's put people out there. Let's let's get them out there. We have the money. Um, I keep hearing, how, how are you going to pay for that? How are you going to pay for that? We have to get these uh, politicians that are for Medicare for all to start saying no. The question is, what are we going to do with the savings? Right. Exactly. That's the best way to look at it. What are we going to do with all the savings? Think about all the money is being wasted right now on this, on this Byzantine system that you just illustrated. And that's the, that's how they need to reframe it. Not how we're going to pay for it. Think about all the money we're going to save. It's yeah. Not, not, not think of the money we're going to save. Just keep it simple. What are we going to do with all the money we save? Yeah. <laughs> You know, because it's almost a, just a rephrasing of their question to to correct it. Uh, well, I shouldn't take you so long tonight. I know you're on tour. So uh, uh, I always appreciate the time for contact. And uh, I'll be at Iowa City. Oh, well, I'm glad you brought that up, folks. So anybody out there, uh, Ron Placona and Aaron doing the Progressive Comedy Tour, we're hitting... Uh, the High Plains states, or whatever you want to call it, in September, we're doing uh, the fourth, we're doing Omaha, the fifth, we're doing um, Sioux Falls, the sixth, Madison, Wisconsin, the seventh, Minneapolis, and the eighth, Iowa City, Iowa, where you will, if you come to that show, you'll get to meet uh, Mitch. I don't know if he's going to have his cat with him, but um, he. <laughs> I'll bring toys. He'll <laughs> <laughs> bring his robotic toys or whatever. You can meet him, so you'll have a. Uh, a political vigilante celebrity sighting if you come to the Iowa City show and uh, all the uh, ticket links are at uh, GrahamElwood.com. Well, Mitch, thank I you. Believe, so Go ahead. I believe All My Ears is going to be there too. Yes, yes. Anna Maris is going to be there. We're going to play the political vigilante game show. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So go to GrahamElwood.com to uh, get your tickets and come out to one of the shows. Ron and I were just in Las Vegas. It was great. And, and people who watch the show, when you come out to the live shows, it's great to meet you in person. Uh, you and I met in person after a Jimmy Dore show last year. And then you came to one of my shows in February. We recorded a video in my hotel room, which was really awesome. So uh, it's great to, uh, to have met you in person and for everybody out there, come out to the live shows. Have fun. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Like, subscribe, share the videos. Uh, watch the ads all the way through. When you click skip ad, I don't get paid. And of course, you can support the show at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin, R-O-K-F-I-N uh, dot com slash Graham Elwood. Both the links are in the show notes below. Thanks a lot for everybody. And thanks, Mitch. <laughs>